Hi there! So today it's the last chapter of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's chapter 30 and this chapter is entitled Charlie's Chocolate Factory. The great glass lift was now hovering high over the town. Inside the lift stood Mr Wonka, Grandpa Joe and little Charlie. How I love my chocolate factory, said Mr Wonka, gazing down. Then he paused and he turned around and looked at Charlie with a most serious expression on his face. Do you love it too, Charlie? he asked. Oh yes, cried Charlie. I think it's the most wonderful place in the whole world. I'm very pleased to hear you say that, said Mr Wonka, looking more serious than ever. He went on, staring at Charlie. Yes, he said. I'm very pleased indeed to hear you say that. And now I shall tell you why. Mr Wonka cocked his head to one side and all at once the tiny twinkling wrinkles of a smile appeared around the corners of his eyes and he said You see, my dear boy, I have decided to make you a present of the whole place. As soon as you're old enough to run it, the entire factory will become yours. Charlie stared at Mr Wonka. Grandpa Joe opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. It's quite true, Mr Wonka said, smiling broadly now. I'm really giving it to you. That's all right, isn't it? Giving it to him, gasped Grandpa Joe. You must be joking. I'm not joking, sir. I'm deadly serious. Why should you want to give your factory to little Charlie? Listen, Mr Wonka said, I'm an old man. I'm much older than you think. I can't go on forever. I've got no children of my own, no family at all. So who's going to run the factory when I get too old to do it myself? Someone's got to keep it going, if only for the sake of the Oompa Loompas. Mind you, there are thousands of clever men who would give anything for the chance to come in and take over from me. But I don't want that sort of person. I don't want a grown-up person at all. A grown-up won't listen to me. He won't learn. He'll try and do things his own way and not mine. So I have to have a child. I want a good, sensible, loving child. To one, one whom I can tell my most precious sweet-making secrets while I'm still alive. So that is why you sent out the golden tickets, cried Charlie. Exactly, said Mr Wonka. I decided to invite five children to the factory and the one I liked best at the end of the day would be the winner. But Mr Wonka, stammered Grandpa Joe, do you really and truly mean that you're giving the whole of this enormous factory to little Charlie? After all, there's no time for arguments, cried Mr Wonka. We must go at once and fetch the rest of the family. Charlie's father and his mother and anyone else that's around, they can all live in the factory from now on. They can all help to run it until Charlie's old enough to do it by himself. Where do you live, Charlie? Charlie peered down through the glass floor at the snow-covered houses that lay below. It's over there, he said, pointing. It's that little cottage right on the edge of town. The tiny little one. I see it, cried Mr Wonka, and he pressed some more buttons and the lift shot downwards towards Charlie's house. I'm afraid my mother won't come with us, Charlie said sadly. Why ever not? Because she won't leave Grandma Josephine and Grandma Georgina and Grandpa George. But they must come too. They can't, Charlie said. They're very old and they haven't been out of bed for 20 years. Then we'll take the bed along as well. With the minute, said Mr Wonka. There's plenty of room in this lift for a bed. You couldn't get the bed out of the house, said Grandpa Joe. It won't go through the door. You mustn't despair, cried Mr Wonka. Nothing is impossible. You watch. The lift was now hovering over the roof of the bucket's little house. What are you going to do, cried Charlie. I'm going... I'm going right on in to fetch them, said Mr Wonka. How? asked Grandpa Joe. 
Through the roof, said Mr Wonka, pressing another button. No, shouted Charlie. Stop, shouted Grandpa Joe. Crash, went the lift, right down through the roof of the house into the old people's bedroom. Showers of dust and broken tiles and bits of wood and cockroaches and spiders and bricks and cement went raining down on the three old ones who were lying in bed and each one of them thought that the end of the world had come. Grandpa, Grandma Georgina fainted, Grandma Josephine dropped her false teeth, Grandpa George put his head under the blanket and Mr and Mrs Bucket came rushing in from the next room. Save us! cried Grandma Josephine. Calm yourself, my darling wife, said Grandpa Joe, stepping out of the lift. It's only us. Mother, cried Charlie, rushing into Mrs Bucket's arms. Mother, mother, listen to what's happened. We're all going to live in Mr Wonka's factory and we're going to help him run it. And he's given it all to me. And, and, and. What are you talking about, said Mrs Bucket. Just look at our house, cried poor Mr Bucket. It's in ruins. My dear sir, said Mr Wonka, jumping forward and shaking Mr Bucket warmly by the hand. I'm so very glad to meet you. You mustn't worry about your house. From now on, you're never going to need it again anyway. Here's a picture of Grand, um, Grandpa Joe jumping out of the lift. And uh, you can see Mr Wonka in the lift door as well. And Charlie's rushing out to give his... Mum a great big hug and Grandma Josephine is looking absolutely petrified in the background. Have a look at this chaos. Look at that. Look at all the mess. Goodness me. Who is this crazy man? Screamed Grandma Josephine. He could have killed us all. This, said Grandpa Joe, is Mr Willy Wonka himself. It took quite a time for Grandma, Grandpa Joe and Charlie to explain to everyone exactly what had been happening to them all day. And even then they all refused to ride back to the factory in a lift. I'd rather die in my bed, shouted Grandma Josephine. So would I, cried Grandma Georgina. I refuse to go, announced Grandpa George. So Mr Wonka and Grandpa Joe and Charlie, taking no notice of their screams, simply pushed the bed into the lift. They pushed Mr and Mrs Bucket in after it. Then they got in themselves. Mr Wonka pressed a button. The doors closed. Grandma Georgina screamed and the lift rose up off the floor and shot through the hole in the roof out into the open sky. Charlie climbed onto the bed and tried to calm the three old people who were still petrified with fear. Please don't be frightened, he said. It's quite safe and we're going to the most wonderful place in the whole world. Charlie's right, said Grandpa Joe. Will there be anything to eat when we get there? asked Grandma Josephine. I'm starving. The whole family's starving. Anything to eat, said Cr Charlie laughing. Oh, you just wait and see. And that is the end of the last chapter. And it is the end of our story. That's the end of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, the next book I'm going to read um, is going to be The Twits by Roald Dahl, which is one of my personal childhood favourites. I absolutely love it. Um, so if you'd like to join me and watch that book next, just type in Mrs Goodreads The Twits and all the episodes will come up as I record them, all the chapters. All right, it's been lovely reading to you and if you've managed to tune in for all the chapters and carry on listening to me the whole time, well done. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, bye, take care.